All right, all right. It's Friday. We're back at the podcast. I am in a new shirt. I've never worn someone else's apparel on a uh, podcast, but today I got a uh, a shirt. It fits nice, nice uh, medium for me, you know. Uh, so uh, the man with the mortgage plan is here. I have Mike here from the man with the mortgage plan. Guy's been in business for 19 years. Through this, uh, the man with the mortgage plan is his own brand within the advisors uh, family of mortgages. And uh, thanks for the shirt, man. Hey, listen, it's the least I could do. Listen, it's great. I'm rocking it. This is, again, the first time I'm going off my uh, Brooks Brothers uh, button-down shirts looks for listen. for the podcast. We've done thirty-something podcasts, and you got me to you got me to change my shirt. Listen, Thank listen, you. It's all about open mindedness. And then you came in with a koozie, so I threw that on my wingman water. So we have uh, the man with the mortgage man koozie, which. It's really cool. So yeah, we got hats too. We got sweatshirts, t-shirts, you koozies. Got, you got it all. And so I'll give you stuff that people could use. You there know? you go. I uh, I love it. So let's get right into it. So from MMA to uh, mortgages, how does that happen? Basically, I had a plan in my mind. Okay, so I I used to train in all different mixed martial arts. I was in the restaurant business, um, and I knew that it was too hard to finish both of them. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And I was actually training for ECW wrestling also. So all those things, I just, I love the combat sports, you mm -hmm. know? So, so you're a tough guy. Yeah, you know, if, if someone has a problem, I can finish it for you. you know? I, but I never yeah. started. I so, just finish it. Listen, if we ever have a problem, any of my visitors ever have a problem, let's call the man with the mortgage That's plan. It. Not just the plan for the mortgage. I got <laughs> other plans. Anyway, um, yeah, so I said to myself, my dad was saying it, like, you got to get out of the business, the restaurant business and all this stuff. It's you tough, got to find a something because I, I hated school i mm -hmm. went to college on and off you know it just wasn't fun to you you know i i like working better a lot know? of entrepreneurs that we've had on a lot of entrepreneurs i know that i do business with yeah that, that's a common theme you know i've always said if you've watched it and people have know know i like this line entrepreneurs are wired differently right yeah we just you know I, think I, differently we do things differently right. i didn't want to just work a regular job i wanted to figure out something that i could Build a career out of it. Sure, sure, you know? sure, sure, sure. And everyone's like, oh, you have to go to college. got to go to college. Mm -hmm. When those times when I would go to the holidays and they found out I stopped going, then I had to hear about it, you know. I, what I do you mean? I was embarrassed. Yeah, you know? you're going to waste your life. You're going to be working at McDonald's. And your parents, you know, didn't want to tell their tell their, oh, their relatives. Oh, yeah, like, no, that's what I mean. With yeah. the, we got everybody yeah, together, yeah. and I got to hear it like ten times. Yep, you know? I totally it's understand. Like, Come on, man, you know. And, you know, you're, you don't know what to do. You know what's funny is my, my parents said to me, listen, you might not want to go to college, but you have to go. You have to get a four-year education. We're going to pay for a four-year education. You have to get it. And then if you never use it after that, it doesn't matter. But you'll have that. And, you know, that was their security blanket for me. So uh, and they pushed me to go, and I didn't really always want it. But, yeah. you know, at the end of the time, at the end of the day, I did enjoy college. I loved the fun of it. I loved right. more the social aspect. I got into a fraternity. I lived off campus, all that kind of good stuff. You know, when one of the guys that um, went to college with me, uh, you know, 25 years ago, you know, as a wingman, as a wingman guy now. So, see that? Uh, uh, you know, 25 years full later, circle. full circle. That's awesome. And, and you know, great guy, great person. So, uh, yeah. shout out to Dave today. Awesome. Um, so, so you didn't. So then, what what happened? Okay, so it was just like, you know, I was basically going to the gym three hours a day because mm -hmm. that was like that I like to do. I didn't mm -hmm. have a lot of money. I never knew what I wanted to do. And I just said, you know, I gotta get, I gotta figure something out by 30. So. 29 in a couple of weeks, I got out. I got an interview, tried this mortgage company, you know, uh -huh. learned this pitch. You get no computer, nothing. You're just sitting in the cubicle learning a pitch, reciting it week after week after week. And then after like two months, you get on the phone. But it was really hard in the beginning because my first five deals went to the guy that trained me. Uh -huh. And I was only making 20%. So that's like nothing. Yeah, sure. So I was getting a $300 a week draw, and they were I had to work like 60-something hours Basically, with 12 hour days almost. Yeah. Hustle. Monday to Friday. You hustle. And, and then I worked Saturday at the restaurant. Okay. So I, was, I didn't have a lot of free time. You know, so Saturday I, was to make money because the $300 correct. draw wasn't going yeah, to make you live. Exactly. And, and, and then 29 years old, yeah. you have responsibilities. You, have, you want right. to do some fun stuff. Exactly. Yeah. And I, was, I didn't have a lot of like, dress clothes, so I yeah. had to go to open a Kohl's card, you know, buy sure. all these clothes so yep. I could go, you know. So you could look so now I Because every day I had to wear a shirt, tie. And the slacks, you know. The good thing day. is the world has changed because now you're oh, yeah, rocking yeah, the hoodie. Well, and, well, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. it's working out. I do you. have some polo shirts with my logo on. Oh, so, cool. Yeah, Very so cool. That's pretty good. But I need to get more stuff like that. Maybe a tie with my logo. Oh, that would be pretty cool. Right? Yeah. But uh, yeah, so 
finally, once I got it down, then I was like, wow, I'm pretty good at this. Mm-hmm. You know, it, It's all about understanding what you're talking about. Because sure. they give you something to pitch, and you're like, hey, oh, whatever. I don't know what this means. I'll say it. You know, sounds good. Yeah. You know, and then uh, after a while, they put us on teams, and then – but I was still paying back the three hundred dollar withdrawal because yep. now I'm on a team, and now no matter how many loans I'm closing, I'm only getting a small percentage of that, and that goes to pay the drawback. And everybody else is getting eight, nine, ten thousand dollar checks every month. And I'm like, man, this is what am I doing wrong? It took me one whole year to get an actual paycheck for myself. So it was a long year. Yeah, you know, a lot of hours. You know, but we had a lot of fun. It was kind of like a college fraternity. Like yeah, but you believed in the system, and yeah. you saw that it was working. Right, right. So you knew that it could happen. It just you yeah. just had to pay your dues, essentially, Correct. to get there. Yeah. So, you know, and then once I uh, succeeded with that and I understood what, how to do it, uh-huh. then it was like, oh, wow, I'm a salesman. I didn't think I would ever do that because even when I worked in a restaurant, I was very shy. I, I, when Were you I, in the front of the house or the back of the house? Both. I did okay. everything. So my parents had a restaurant called the Chowder Pot at one time. I don't know if you ever heard of that. No. Where was that? Grandfather started. It was in Keyport okay. back in the 70s. Then we grew. At one time, we had like 11 or 13 of them throughout the family. Wow. Old Bridge. Neptune, um, Tent Falls, um, Rollway, uh, what's the other? Penn Salkin, they, they were all over. Do you know where Big Ed's Barbecue is? Mm-hmm. That used to be a chowder pot. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm a transplant to New Jersey, so it's not, oh, okay. I, I, I've only been here for 12 years, so I don't know. Oh, like yeah. No, this is back, you know, so, 80s into the early yeah, 90s. So that's why I don't know, but yeah, I, so. that's awesome. That's awesome, that family restaurant. Like yeah, that. so, but it was like a crazy transition because um, before that, we went through a lot of like up and downs. Like mm-hmm. it was going really good. It was good. My dad came over from Sicily, you know, and then he made pizza and mm-hmm. then he learned that. And then we got the seafood restaurant. But then there was that seafood scare. If you remember in the eighties, mm-hmm. there was all the needles showing up yeah. everywhere. So that kind of scared some people away. And we had some stuff happen where some of the shrimp we were getting from the Gulf of Mexico, a boat, um, a gasoline uh. leak, and they sent it, sent it anyway, and they wouldn't refund thousands of dollars. So my grandfather, you know, tried to clean it as best he could because you know. So that didn't help. So then they all closed. We had the last one of the East Windsor. That was um, until 96. Then I remember I was working there. I thought I was going to work there. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, oh, I'll work here. But that yeah. didn't work out. So we ended up losing our restaurant. And then two years later, Sheriff said we had our house. So oh. it was a tough time. So, yeah. you know, having come back through all that, anything else that's great. except for death is attainable. Yep, that's great. That's that's the definition of grit, being able to come back from yeah. two severe losses like that. That's that. Tough. Yeah, it definitely built character and showed me hard work. Mental, and, mental toughness. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was trying times, but you know, I always find a way. That's the way. Yep. I, you know, whatever it takes. So now you you've you've figured out this mortgage world, and now you're a different. You're different than some of these other guys. A lot of guys are on teams, and a lot of guys do things with you know a few people on the team. It sounds like you like this end to end customer service. You yeah. know, being the guy. Yeah. Tell me more about that. So I have a team. I, I run the team. I, you know, I take care of everything from my team. I provide them leads and stuff. Mm-hmm. But whenever I get a person, I like to, you know, set up the meeting, whether it's a Zoom or a call or whatever they are comfortable with, and get their information and run the credit, you know, put everything together, mm-hmm. go e- over each step with them. And then I have my processor. She helps me out. They're, well, I have two different ones, but they're, they're awesome. But um, as far as the personal touch, I, I believe it's very important to stay in touch because some lenders – you talk to John, and then you talk to Becky, then you talk to Tracy, and then it's like you got five people in the pot. And yeah. You're like, ooh, who's this? Who, who, who's that? Yeah, who's the know, point I mean, of contact? Yeah, there's too many, you know. Too many cooks in the kitchen. Correct. And, and then when there's an issue, Indians, that's what and no one, says. wait, what do you say? My dad says, too many chiefs, not enough Indians. Yeah, oh, that's yeah, a good one, too. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and then, then no one's responsible, and then right. everybody, it's fingers. just like this. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. Oh, well, it was their fault or her fault, yep. whatever, yeah, exactly. So I just like to maintain, like, so you, they, you they keep... talk to me the whole process. Perfect. They send me the documents, even though they, I tell them to CC my processor. I want to be on everything. I want to know what's going on so that somebody doesn't call me and say, well, what's this? You, you don't know? want to get blindsided. Exactly, because yeah. it's nothing worse than someone calling you and you don't understand what they're you, talking about. You're, it's your name on the line. Well, exactly. That's the reviews coming. As you so know. reviews, I mean, so reviews are a big part of your world. Yeah, How many to. reviews are you sitting at right now? I got about 160, and that's only because I've been only doing them for four years. Yep, sure. You know, if I had started that way sooner, I'd have a lot more. Yep, obviously. sure. So, 
you know. Some, and people, a lot some of people are lazy too. Yeah, so a lot you know? of your business is referral too. Oh, and I would and, say 100%. and repeat. So like yeah. you need those reviews. Um, mm -hmm. you know, and again, networking is probably some aspect of your life because yeah. that's the way you and I met. Yep, definitely. We met at uh, Joe Bella's, I believe. Yeah, K-Chef. Um, K-Chef, shout out to K-Chef, shout out to Joe Bella. Joe Bella. Uh, they, we went to their event. You were a sponsor for a K-Chef event. That's how I got to uh, meet you. Right. And then through there, um, you know, we met at, you know, it was at Joe Bella's. And uh, that was a great networking event. And I yeah. believe you did a second one I met, I saw Correct. you at. Yep, yep. Recently. I did one last year and one this year. Yep. yep, awesome. So those are those are great places to meet new people and perspective. Yep. Um you know, potential people for your pipeline. Yeah. Um, and again, I think that when you when you deal with networking, you deal with referrals, and you deal with repeat business, you got to be on your game because people aren't going to refer you if you're not doing nice work. Exactly. Definitely are a creature of habit, and whatever you show is what you are. Yeah. You know what I mean? You show you're not doing a good job, that's probably not, you're not doing a good job. Yep. And where do you see, I mean, the, the real estate market's a little bit of a tricky spot in Ocean yeah. and Monmouth County. Right. What are you seeing? What are you feeling? I mean, it's still busy. There's people buying houses. So what I will tell you is you can't just look at interest rates because historically we're still right around where they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. We had that two, three year gap where it was two, threes, you know, I've never seen that ever that low in yep, 18, you, 19 years. Yeah. So you can't go keep comparing to that. That's like comparing to somebody that had everything handed to them and you have nothing. It's two different worlds. You can, everyone has a different path. So what I tell people is, if you can afford the house now, buy it. Because yep. when uh, the rates do come down, you can refinance. You can't refinance your rent. Remember that. <laughs> rent <laughs> keeps going up. That's a good way to put it. You can't refinance your rent. And again, I think that that's a different perspective. And, you know, again, it, you, if you believe that the rates are going to go down, but you love the house and you love the neighborhood, and you, you know, it's, it's, it's a good. Exactly. And, and <laughs> it'll build equity. Yep. The house is appreciating like crazy. So. When it's time to refinance, you're gonna have all that equity, and now maybe you'll even get yourself at an even lower rate because you have more equity. Sure. So. Or you could pay you cash out refi. Yeah, you can cash out refi and too. you know invest in you know a, a right. project. Yeah, a lot of people have been doing um, home equity line of credit because they don't want to touch <clears> the first rate. Mm -hmm. if they have a low rate. Sure. But for first time buyers, there's plenty of programs that could help you with down payment assistance. But you do got to keep your credit score in line. You got to be over 620 or 600 to do anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, we do have lower scores, but then you need all the other pieces to be. But perfect. that's but that's the that's the benchmark of getting. Yeah, well, for the if you want one of these down payment assistance, you got to be at least a six twenty. Mm -hmm. that, that's that. You know what I mean? Like, the problem with today's economy is that everything's so expensive. People are starting to live on the credit cards. Yep. So, you know, I saw something the other day. Sixty percent of Americans are living check to check. That's a big problem. That's you know? scary. Yeah. That's it. And um, the cost of the food, the gas. It's not even like they're going out and just buying stuff. Yeah. Look at the Mammoth Mall. It's like basically dead. There's nothing in there. I know. It's unfortunate. You know what I mean? I grew up in that area. So you see the stores aren't even really making profits. A lot of restaurants, small restaurants mm -hmm. go out. Look at the one right across the way. I'm sure that had something to do with it. Absolutely. You know, so everything costs more. Our dollar is not stretching like it used to. Mm -hmm. And what, like, I'll give you an example. In the beginning of 22, <clears throat> that's when all the rates got went up. Mm -hmm. It was like in March 22, they went from three to six in like five seconds. Okay. So I had like 50 people pre-approved and probably I'd say 35 of them no longer qualified because the budget dropped and their debt to income went up a lot. Yeah. So that's the challenge. I get a lot of referrals, but a lot of the people are either the credit's not where it needs to be. We have to work on that. Do you put a, do you come up with like a homework assigned, a homework assignment for these guys? Like but, to say like, here's how to make your credit better. Here's how to do a budget right. to help them. Like, is that something that yeah they can I, I do do you? that yeah okay. I put them I say okay you, you need to pay this credit card down I have a simulator that I work with but if it's a real bad credit like five below 550 560 I have credit repair people I can refer to mm -hmm. but a lot of the problem is that the people don't do what you ask them to do yep. and then I check back in a few months and either they disappear or they didn't do it you know I mean you can only do so much you, at that point. if you want my help this is what you have to do sure and there's plenty of people that friends, family, coworkers, whatever, even clients, I do help them get on a budget as well. Sure. So that we can get to the dream of home, home ownership goal, you know? You gotta follow the steps, you sure. know what I mean? Sure. So, I mean, so that's, I mean, it's great that you're doing those kind of things, and it's great that you have that customer service angle, and yeah. you've been, and again, you've been through it, and I guess I also believe that, I was talking to my nephew the other day via text, 
and I said to him, you know, if you work in the restaurant, people that work in the restaurant space, like yeah. they become good salesmen, they become yeah. they become biz- good business owners because they deal with everything as a, in that young in that young professional world. And right. you know, his response to me was, I'm not looking to own a business anytime soon. But on the other side, is I just think that dealing with the public is yeah. just a great way, like. Again, I was a bartender for, when I went to bar, when I went to college. Yeah. Uh, you know, for three of the four years, I was a bartender yeah. at a local bar, and um, you know, serving drinks to you know college kids was fun. But um, it also teaches you like how to deal with people because there are a lot of personalities. Yeah. You know, I always like you know now when I go out to dinner, no matter what it is, I, I just take it. I never never complain that something's not right. I'm not that guy. I, right, right. I my feeling is I get three squares again tomorrow. So. If I lose a meal tonight, it's not the end of the world. But there are a lot of people that you know have an opinion. They're 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 critics. They're chefs. Oh, and so uh, you know when they come into your business, they tell you how to run the business. Oh, it's like yeah, well, you know. So I think that having that experience as a younger guy yeah. in the family business kind of helped you in today's world. Yeah, it definitely um, shapes you. Help, yeah, I'll tell you. Give you a quick story. When I was yeah. in, in in Brookdale. One of the things I did not want to do that they kept telling me I had to do was a public speaking class, mm-hmm. and I that I was terrified. And now you think you could yeah, thank them? Yeah, for that. I felt well. No, I didn't do it. I dropped out. I was like, oh, I'm not doing it. All right, <laughs> I'm not doing it. But I you kept been changing. Now you see I the kept changing. It. Yeah, now I yeah. Well, the thing was, I wanted to be a police officer too. That was another thing. Uh-huh. But then I kept getting pulled over for things. That's I discussed on my podcast for stupid, you know, stuff yeah. like whatever. So, so you weren't the model police officer. <laughs> no. Well, I, you know what it is? I don't like. I'm very much. Um, by the book kind of person like mm-hmm. i i like a code basically of you know this is how people should be treated no mm-hmm. matter what color sure. what race no catholic this one that whatever whatever you are that everyone should be treated the same everybody should be held to the yeah. same standard and and, and sometimes I, as much as i love police officers there are plenty that i've encountered that have this power trip yeah totally. and they think they can treat people however they want and you know sometimes Not i cool. invite them let's go outside you know yeah. let's let, no weapons let's take care of business yeah if you win i go to jail if i win I go home. Oh, Has anybody like, taken you up on this? No, I had a couple of cops surround me one time, pulled me over. And my my license got suspended, uh-huh. and uh, I had my, one of my uh, my gym bags, and I had my my gi in there with my nunchucks. Yep. And this guy goes, "Oh, are you a boxer?" And I said, "Yeah, boxers use nunchucks all the time." You know, like yep. you know, uh-huh. sarcastic. But the other guy made me sit on the car hood, had his gun like here, like whatever, yep. ripping my car apart yep. because I got a ticket for. Um, Passing a school bus, which I never did, uh-huh. and um, the the bus driver called the cops. Says I passed the school bus, six point ticket. I had to get an attorney, everything. Got it, got it dropped to two points, but I was like, I still got to pay two points, and I paid like two thousand yeah. dollars for that. Yeah. So the system never got updated that I went to court. Uh-huh. I said I had a you know, warrant. Mm-hmm. I mean, I uh, I missed court, whatever you call mm-hmm. it. I forget. So that's what happened. And then they you know surround the car, they bring the dog in, whatever, oh, and that's. The ones I invited to challenge. Yeah, so they, the, like, so they didn't oh, take obviously you. you've been trained, you know, whatever. Yeah. I was like, but you guys are, you know, you're you're busting my chops over nothing. Yeah, this is all a misunderstanding, and you're. So that was, you know, one of the times. I'm glad to see that they didn't take you up on that one. Probably wouldn't have ended well. Nah, probably not for them. So, um, now how big how big is your t- is your current team? My team is uh, right now. I have six people on it. Yeah. And how many states are you in? Me uh, personally, yeah. Uh, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, and Florida right now. So four states. Four that you states. Can write in. Yeah, but and I can. Then, no, I can do with the other ones, but I, I have to put it through court. But I can yep. do it so like a referral kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I can still do it at least. You know what I mean? And uh, I saw recently on one of your Facebook posts that your your record you have a record speed of getting these uh, deals done. Yeah, I had a uh, deal we did with Rocket Mortgage. Uh huh. That's one of our affiliates, uh-huh. and I closed a, a purchase deal in ten days. Ten days start to finish. Yeah, so I think it sent me a nice red award. What's the normal turnaround time? Just to give people- most people close in like twenty to thirty days, uh-huh. like at a fast pace. So ten days was pretty good. Yeah, considering that we did in house, but we used Rocket Mortgage as our outlet for it. Mm-hmm. But the, the fact they even said that to me, I was shocked. That's just, pretty I was cool. Like, wow. I was one day I just get this box and the, the the reps like oh yeah you got something I'm like what is this yeah he's like well you have the fastest closing ten days he had no you had no idea what it was for mm. that's pretty funny yeah and I was like wow um very that, nice award too that's cool yeah so what's on the horizon for 2024 and beyond to continue this growth to continue your your brand where do you um, see it I'm just gonna keep doing what I do I'm trying to you know I'm always looking to improve. 
So mm-hmm. anything like sometimes I have a, a habit where if I if someone's not ready now and I follow up a few times, mm-hmm. even though they're on my drip campaign, when I reach out after a while, they don't answer. So then after a while, I just whatever, make a note and I try them again. Mm-hmm. But I want to get someone more that can follow up with them besides just the drip and an occasional call or text, mm-hmm. email, a little bit more. You know, I don't know. I want to find some way that those people don't get lost. Yeah, Because sure. once in a while, I do find that they disappeared, and then I find out they bought a house. I'm like, well, why'd you disappear? I stayed in contact with you. Yeah. I, I have you on my calendar. I always have my calendar be like, bing, 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 all the time. Just so the follow-ups I, and right keep, all the time. Keep, keep everybody like if your engaged. credit's not good now, and I tell you, let's do this. I call you in three months. So then three months is what do we mean? So like June, June, June. So June fifteenth, I'm you know calling. Now, when you don't respond to me, you're going to get like two or three more messages over the next couple of weeks. Then I'm like, all right, well, I don't know. And then I'll put you on like a six month thing. Mm-hmm. But then once in a while, because I become friendly with people and I know a lot of realtors, I have a lot of connections in the business that mm-hmm. I've built sure. over the years. Yeah. Connections, realtors, attorneys. Title Most companies. of your work, Ocean County? No, I do the whole state. The whole state. Yeah. Ocean, Monmouth, you know, I got a couple of Bergen. Yeah. Man, but most, most counties, except I don't do a lot in um, someone that's real south. Atlantic County. Atlantic County is down by AC. Yeah, that one I, I occasionally, but it's just I don't really market that area that yep, often. Yeah, sure. That's a different. That's a totally different yeah. market. And it's a little I outside. Can, uh, yeah. The good but thing is I can do it all. Just if I haven't had people wanted to buy down there. You know? Yep, sure. So, all right. So, um, and then when you look at like the when you look at this outlook for 2024, I know you say there's still people doing. You think that what, what you're feeling on the rate is it going to come down? I think they're gonna. We have some big data coming out next week. Mm-hmm. Next week's the Fed meeting. Definitely not cutting them now. Okay. But yesterday we had the consumer uh, price index this week and the PPI, the uh, producer price index. Both of them came in hotter, so inflation went up again. But it's energy, it's housing, it's, it's stuff like that that we can't control gas. Yep. You know, And that's why it's been bothering me that the Fed doesn't say, well, if everything costs more, of course we're going to spend more. Yep, you know? sure. So they're saying maybe in June there's still like a 60 to 70% chance they maybe do the first cut, but they're definitely not doing five or six like they were predicting. If we so get people two or three have to start year, to think, re- rethink their, their, their home buying strategy a little bit. I mean, you can't just rely on the rates because once the rates do go down, you're going to have a whole influx of 5 million more people. Yeah. So you think you're having a problem now. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the whole thing. A lot of people are on the fence about it. But if you can buy a house now, buy it. And then you can always refinance after always six payments. Yep. You know, and then you'll be in an even better position because you have the equity. You just have to be able to maintain. Now, I'm not going to tell everyone to buy a house right now because it may not be uh, effective means for them right now. Mm-hmm. You know, so maybe for them renting works right now. But sure. If you guys watch the news and then watch everything, everybody's rent keeps going up a lot. Sure, sure, know? sure. So sometimes the mortgage payment is actually cheaper. Yeah, 100. percent You're paying your own uh, mortgage, not the landlord's. Yep, sure. Which is key. That is awesome. So, you know, tying it all back to grit, I mean, you've, you've, you've overcome a lot. You've changed paths along the way. Right. What, for, for, that, for that person that's watching that, you know, you, you grew up through hustle. I mean, you went from a family business to, you know, working on a drawer, which, you know, guys are not used to these days. No. Like, you know, what, what's that? What, was that? what was that mind strength like to, you know, push through that 60-hour work week, not getting a check or getting a small dividend? I mean, that's a hard... It's a hard game. It was. I mean, thankfully, uh, during that time, I had, I ended up moving back in with my parents because I was living with a friend and we had a little disagreement. But um, you know, staying with them helped me save some money. Yeah. Because I didn't have a lot of money. Mm-hmm. You know, you'd be twelve hundred dollars a week and then whatever I made in the restaurant. Yeah. So I had enough to pay my basic bills. You know. But. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, but you pushed through it and yeah, you, you yeah, saw it, the other it, side. But exactly. a lot of people can't do that. Like. Right. Well, I don't know what's up with a lot of people today. <laughs> a lot of people today don't want to work, I see. Like, the, a lot of people just want to get top dollar and don't do nothing. And that's unfortunate. I think that's today's society pushing. Like, when they were in during COVID and they were paying people more to stay home than work, mm-hmm. that messed up a lot of people. Why would they go to work? Sure. <laughs> right? <laughs> I could stay home and get more money. But then when we they go back, I mean, I have a friend of mine in Florida, and he's having a hard time. He's a chef. And... Every time he's out of place for a while, something happens and then he has a disagreement or the people start cutting back on what they were giving him, like bonuses mm-hmm. and stuff. Sure. And then he starts looking around and now now he's back in the cycle looking for something and nobody wants to pay him. <clears throat> you know, it's kind of like an appraisal. Just because you have the best house in the block doesn't mean you're going to get what you want for it. Mm-hmm. You got to go by the what the market's dictating. Mm-hmm. You need comparables that 
actually are aligned with similar styles of house mm -hmm. and the value. It's a good way to think about it. Yeah. So that's just like with the job market. You mm -hmm. know, right now, no one's going to pay top dollar. A lot of places aren't even giving raises. Yep. You know, that's why one of my clients was complaining the other day. Oh, I only got 3%. I said, well, he gets 3% more than a lot of people. That's fair. You have to see where we're at right now. You know? I, I think the appraisal way to think about it is a great way to kind of put it into a very easy perspective that everybody understands. I'm all about that. Apples to apples. Like I want everybody, as I'm showing you the path, I want you to be educated so you understand. So you never know. You can tell your friends and family, coworkers, and then they will understand a little better as well. Mm -hmm. you know, education is key. Education is key. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you coming on today. Tell people where they can find you. Let them know where, where to find you on Facebook, Instagram, your website. I'm just showing off my shirt real quick. <laughs> so uh, you can find me. My Instagram is the man with the mortgage plan. On Facebook, it's under uh, Michael Randazzo. Um, and if you want to check out my podcast, it's uh, Michael. I'm sorry. It's the man with the mortgage plan presents the daily grind on Apple, uh, Spotify, Spotify uh, Amazon, I and iHeart. Yep. Awesome. Very cool. So I am glad that you came on today. This yeah, was awesome. Me too. Thank you for uh, educating and telling people about how you did it. And again, I think your story's got a little bit more grit than uh, others because that's, that's a straight up hustle that you did. And, and I, I, I think that like, I wish more people did it because they would, they would respect it more. Like, so you expect, you respect the grind more than the average guy can, especially if the average guy doesn't own a business. Like, because you, you did it, man. All right. That's why I named the podcast that. Uh, I love it. Because every day is a grind. I love it. You I, just got to keep grinding keep away. Keep grinding. That's so it. So keep doing what you're doing. I look forward to seeing you at other uh, events and things. Yeah. We're going to be doing a lunch and learn if you want to come down in April. Also, I know that you want to get on a real estate forum. Yes. Once we figure out, you know, we have a couple that are scheduled. But as we schedule more, I will get you uh, on that too so that okay. you can come back and uh, meet with some other like-minded professionals like yourself. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Great Thank to see you. you. Thanks for Likewise. coming in. Thank you. Take care, everyone.